So good evening, everyone from India. I'm Dr. Gagandeep Kaur, the host of the day. So I will heartily welcome you all to Global Interdisciplinary Summit 2020. So with this, we'll move on to the power pack session of the day, the first session. I welcome, I welcome Dr. Maria with us. So before moving on to the session, I would like to guide all the participants and the viewers for all the registration purposes, the certificate purposes, as well as speakers schedule, you all can follow the links which are present in the description box. So with this, I would like to talk about Dr. Maria. Doctors graduated from Venezuela Central University in 1990, specializing in prosthodontics at Boston University in 1993, receiving later a master's degree at Boston University in 1994 and a PhD from Santa Maria University in 2017, Venezuela. In addition to her private practice, she maintains active membership in several scientific societies and academics. Dr. is the current chairwoman of the Master of Science in Dental Implant Program and as an associate professor at Santa Maria University. She served as full-time faculty at the Implant Foundation of Dr. Arun Garg in Santo Domingo, Dominican, Republic. She is also a featured lecturer for the continuing education organizations implant seminars in the United States. Dr. Proudly is the president of the International Dental Implant Association, IDIA, Venezuelan chapter, an organization in which she holds diplomat status. She has authored several articles published in scientific journals based on her research and practice in dentistry. Many of her past projects and research have been recognized and awarded. One of her greatest passions in her work as an international speaker and educator. So with this, I wholeheartedly welcome Dr. Maria with us. And ma'am, the stage is all yours. Thank you so much. I really appreciate for the introduction. I'm very glad to be part of the organization. And I want to start uh, sharing my presentation here with you. Okay, so thank you again to everyone. Hello, good morning from the East Coast and uh, good afternoon or good night, India. How are you doing? Uh, we're gonna join like for a half, uh, 45 hour, uh, 45 minutes of uh, the lecture about the work by fifth generation as a derma feeder for facial rejuvenation. So uh, as part of that, uh, something that is very important to know is about how aesthetic are different from each other, right? And because of that, we're gonna have some beauty, beauty from age. As you are getting younger or you're getting older, if you are Latin, if you're Asian, if you are Americans, we're completely different. So when we talk about facial rejuvenation, we have to talk about aesthetics. And uh, right now we have a big issue going on about aesthetics and it's the globalization of beauty. What is beauty? And it happens that it's happening that the same beauty that we have, let's say in Venezuela will be the same one that's going to be in uh, the States or it's the same one is going to be in Spain or it's the same one is going to be all over the world. And uh, the paradigms are changing, the models are changing. So uh, whatever in the past was beautiful for someone today, the paradigms has completely changed. And this is why, I mean, when you see the Venezuelan here, that like we were, we have misses. Uh, we have certain kind of aesthetics from Indians. You have that kind of aesthetic. And if we move on, we start seeing different ways, different ways uh, to wear our makeup, different ways to dress up our hair, different ways to uh, make up our uh, eyes, and also to underline our lips. So everything is facial, and from the facial comes all of the communication with human beings. What is happening is something that we call perception, 
and because uh, Leonardo da Vinci said human beings represent the sensitive vector that gives life toward the essential beauty. Also, this faculty for the appreciation of beauty is related to the highest space acquired through culture and depend on one complex association, and this is become of Darwin. So because of that, we have to be careful when we talk about aesthetic, because maybe my aesthetic is not your aesthetic, and it's a way that you have perception about it. This is why it's very important for you to go to the mirror and see yourself and check how you perceive yourself. What do you like from your face and what you don't like it? Because it's not the same thing in my perspective. Because of that, we have some uh, nature about aesthetic and we talk about beautiful and ugly. What is beautiful and what is ugly? In dentistry, uh, we talk about symmetry, balancing, and harmony. Because, I mean, the side that we're prostodontists and we talk too much about aesthetic and we care about aesthetic, uh, for us are the main points always see symmetric, balance, and harmony. Of course, what is aesthetic all about? And we have to have a completely balance. When we do sort of those kind of hybrids here, or we want to do the trying, we want to be very symmetrical, very, very perfect. When you have the procedure, the hybrid procedure in the patient mouth, what you want, you want that the lower incisive of age go through the lower uh, lip, follow that lip. I would like to have the two central very, very symmetrical. You will like lateral a little bit shorter, maybe a little bit in, inwards. And you will like the canines a little bit touch that wet sole of the lip. And uh, this is what we try to do as uh, the tooth comes through with our restoration. But what about the facial? What happens in the facial? So the facial is completely different. And I like something that uh, the Academy, um, the, the Horal Facial Harmonization Academy bring up, and that is called symmetry. And what is symmetry? Symmetry is the idea that beauty in any given object originate from the proportion of the part of that object. It's one of the most straightforward ways to account it for beauty. The most standard term for the denoting this theory is symmetry or symmetry, meaning no bilateral symmetry, but good appropriate or fitting proportion. So what I mean is that I will aim symmetry or superficial. Now, that has pros and cons. Why? Because when we talk, we, we work in facial, it's so difficult. The first time that I move from inside of the mouth to the outside, you get so scared. You really work is, um, you feel like you're in another world that you don't know how to move because we're used to work in a very tiny area. So by talking about the face and working in the face, that is something that you can accomplish more. So it's touching your face, it's touching the patient's face, it's touching the eyes, it's, you know, just typing to see how they look, how they feel, what they want, what they don't want it. So by uh, changing the paradigm to be a dentist, to work inside the mouth, to go outside the mouth is a huge, completely story. So something is very important to take care of about uh, symmetry and symmetry. And of course, what is the reality and the patient expectation? What can I was a professional and what the patient wants me to do for them? How many uh, methods I have to conquer, amalgamate to have that beauty? Maybe I have to use more than one, and that might happen. So there is two terms that I would add, that is facial rejuvenation and facial harmonization. 
Facial rejuvenation is when the people look younger. And facial harmonization is when everything is inside the harmony. Not only the face, but your smile, your teeth, your gummy smile, everything is on harmony. So facial harmonization should be inside of facial rejuvenation. These two terms have to work together and be together the whole time. Now, we have to talk about facial shape, contour, proportion, and agents. How is the facial proportion? How are the, 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 the thirst proportion, the gold proportion? Are they symmetry? They are symmetry or they are completely asymmetrical. So there is two things or three things completely different. Symmetry means some sym uh, asymmetry between symmetries. Huge symmetry, we have to compensate. How is the shape of that face? It's rounded, it's triangular, it's square. How are the lips movements? It's very important for us as a restorative and also when we are working as a facial rejuvenation. And of course, the skin aging. We have to work in a skin. So far, we know a lot about teeth and about all of the nature inside the mouth. Now we have to learn outside the mouth. Of course, in the smile, we need to see how the lip production analysis is. Why? Well, because if the patient is class three, already the lower lip is out. So you might want to compensate the upper lip, not the lower lip. It's going to be top pronunciated. The lines and the movements, how the patient talk, how they laugh. Should I compensate the laugh because one side is bigger than the other one? How are the lips and the oral commissures changed? Because as we get older, the commissures go down. So when we're happy and younger, our commissures are uh, parallel to the floor or a little bit up. As soon as we get older, the commissures are coming down. And of course, the lip change. We start changing our chart face, our shape, and our shape. And because of that, the facial or the oral facial harmonization consists on a set of aesthetic procedures to create a very harmony between your teeth, your mouth, and your general face. And because of that, sometimes we need to accommodate extra procedure. Let's see that we make a beautiful restoration, but a beautiful restoration. You love it, the patient will love you. They're so happy, but something is missing. And what is missing? Like it's something not completely perfect. And you know what? Some of the time it's not from the inside of the mouth. Most of the time is coming from the outside. This is where the facial treatment come into place. And this is why you should get that trained. Because small changes in the patient's face change a lot the exit and uh, the success of your treatment plan. So because of that, we need to talk a little bit about face and what is beauty and aesthetic. And believe it or not, it's the same thing from female or for male. And right now we have a lot more men coming up to have some facial uh, changes or touchings, okay, or refreshment. There is a three words that we have to learn. And of course, when we have a younger patient, the skin, the face skin is very healthy, it's glossy. When you get older patient, the skin is aging. What you see in a man or in a female, when we are all a uh, young, everything is beautiful. As we get in old, we get wrinkles, we get marked marionettes, okay? And the expression is very, 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 very marked. And as we get younger, the triangle, the base is in our forehead, but as I will get uh, older, the triangle goes back, goes to our shin, everything goes down. And literally, when we get old, everything goes down. Of course, younger patient has 
a healthy skin in face. So you will see that they have a very full lips. They are prominent. Okay, they have nice cheek. They have more likely triangular or oval facial shape. And this is when you can look the best as possible when you make up. As you get older, the same thing doesn't happen. And it's when you start having psychological problems because you see like wrinkles that start coming. Your face is not the same thing and you want to do something to be younger and be back again. So most of the older females will likely take more stopping for improvements, a huge improvement. When you are young, I mean, what do you want to improve? That you don't want a little bit of uh, your wrinkles around your eyes. Maybe you want to be fine or to be more sexy about your lip. When you're getting old, uh, that part is going away. And what you have to, you want or you're willing to be is more fresh, more, it's not younger, it's like you lost to be, like you are happy. So this is why the appearance will focus in the health, in the vitality and in the well-being. It's a little bit different when you to work with old people or when you work and do facial rejuvenation in young people. And of course, we have, uh, we want to have a tone back of the time. We want to be in a chamber where uh, we want to be really, really young. And so because of that, we have detect like the four, four hair lines we want to detect the glabella here and we get mad we just read the glabella the cross feet that we have the small lines around our eyes as we can see here we can see the older lines or the older the lower palpebra of course we have a malar an absolute malar area as we get older it's coming down we have the initial labial folds, and we have to be careful here because if you come from heritage like me, you might want to have a story suddenly improve, but not completely improve. And you get that older and a little from heritage, you might want to correct that completely. Of course, the filtrum here, the filtrum is very important. And as more shiny you have the filtrum, as more younger you are. The marionettes is all of the uh, lines that you have around uh, your lip, and of course, the shin and the mental soul. As we get older, we get that, so a little bit more floppy, and it's look more down. This is why the triangle change, and all of the base goes completely down. So to accommodate that, we're gonna be talking about their fillers, and the dermal fillers we have in the market, many of them, uh, most of them is based on hyaluronic acid. Another is about calcium hydroxyapatite. Some of them are based on coll uh, collagen. And the one that we want to be talking today is about the autologous blood concentrate, YBRD. So uh, all of them can come in different volumes today, a different consistence, consistence, a little bit more, um, let's see, more uh, thick or thinner. It depends on what side of what type of the problem we want to achieve or we want to solve. Of course, there is something about cosmetic and aesthetic. Cosmetic is when you make up and you wash your, your face and it's gone, right? Aesthetics is when you feel and you think about function, you think about nourish, you feel uh, you think about how to improve the health of my skin. If I need or if I'm talking about nourishment and how to improve my skin and how to provide to my skin nutrition and better health, I want to talk about the autogenous blood concentrate PRP. Otherwise, the others is more aesthetic, I mean, more cosmetic than aesthetic. 
remember aesthetic is function aesthetic is about a um, nourishment aesthetic is about give health when we talk about cosmetic health nourishment and function is not there it's just in case a cosmetic then put uh, a period of time right there so why prp well too many reasons uh, to realize in um, prp first of all uh, is we have a long time uh, history about prp we have too many stories related to and um, but to let you know i'm not too old and that the last 20 years dentistry has changed so much but so much like you cannot believe it i'm so happy because i have seen the eyewitness of the prp when it um discovered by dr gard and dr marx and in 1998 and I was part of it because I saw it. I came down to Miami sometimes on once in a while to check and you know, the big issue was PRP. And like everything in a scientific base, a PRP because you have to solve something. You have to solve a problem, okay? And because Dr. Garg and Dr. Marx need to solve a problem, uh, they think about PRP and how to concentrate things can help. And this is how the whole thing is start. So of course, as you make uh, the, the scientific uh, story, you open to the global community, the global community to ideas on. So we have a concept and we have the concept of the PRP. And later on, we have the theory. And the theory is because all over the world, we work in PRP, and we have to be very grateful for Dr. Gar and Dr. Marx to be the conqueror of that. So, because we have a lot of research done, we have from 1999, and we have for 2004, and we have for 2000, okay, and then we go forward to 2005, and we start spinning them and we get jelly and we have a lot of use and uh, this is an article that we wrote in uh, 2019 and of course you have uh, a book written by Dr. Gary from 2000 um, and then the second edition is 2018. So we have a lot of research that back up of what why to use that and why to realize on PRP. And of course, we have some time frame from 1994 with PRP with Dr. Marx and Dr. Gard. And then we're going to call PRF and Anitua, Dr. Anitua from Spain, um, talk about it in 1995, then Chokron in 2002. And then we call IPRF, APRF. IPRF, PRF, we have too many words and it's more marketing of, from everyone than the real way. The real way is PRP. So, ontologies of blood concentration were fifth generation platelet rich plasma health. This is what we want to be talking the last minutes. So uh, why we would like to talk about it? What is the beauty to talk about PRP? Uh, the one PRP, the five or the fifth generation? Well, because I have platelet, I have growth factory, I have new blood vessels, I have more uh, supplies, um, blood formation, I have a better response of the tissue regeneration. This is all the beauty of PRP right now. And of course, uh, when we talk about PRP, we talk about PD, uh, PDGF, which are growth factors as well as the PEGF or TGFB or EGF. And mainly they work in the angiogenesis, mitogenesis of the cells, macrophages activation. I have angiogenesis and the vascular genesis. 
long-term uh, healing about soft tissues and uh, healing in completely cells, also from heart tissue. Relation, um, regulation of inflammatory processes, and of course, cells growing, proliferation, and differentiation. So it helps a lot uh, in terms of um, nourish our face. Of course, if uh, the blood has some protein, as the albumins, globulins, uh, fibronogens, regulatory proteins, and clothing factors. Because of that, and because we would like to work with something that is bio, what means bio is natural, that is not, is going to nourish us, is going to uh, give us a function, and it's going to be nutrition through our skin. We want to be uh, working with a plasma protein fillers as a stimulated effect that is going to promote cellular regeneration, increase collagen production, and prevent loss of cellular structures. And what is the difference between first regeneration and five generation? Well, there is a huge difference. The first generation, I wanna spin one time. Let's see that it's gonna centrifuge just one. I wanna get less platelets and less growth factors. While if I'm working with the five generation, it's going to be double centrifugation, more platelet and more growth factor is going to be there. So I want to have more nutrition for my skin. And of course, I want to have one side is going to be my albumin, and the other side will going to be my growth factor. And this is I present to you the fifth generation um, PRRP. This is the warm side, this is the liquid side. So this is an ontology blood concentrate platelet rich plasma hill that uh, we produced an article and uh, uh, with Dr. Rossi, Dr. Garrett, Dr. Cushman, and is put on, on the, uh, the Journal of the Academy of Oral Implantology. So this is called the warm fifth generation PRP as a dermal filler for facial rejuvenation. So of course, like everything in life, you have indication, contraindication. What indication do you have? Of course, in any patient that want to have facial harmonization or facial rejuvenation, doesn't matter if it is an old or young or male or female. When it's contraindicated, when you have a collagen thickness, lupus, anticoagulant problem, you are smoking or you have a metabolic syndrome. And of course, we're going to have a gray zone like rejuvenation, glowing skin, a new facial culture. So whenever we want to have rejuvenation, glowing skin, new facial contour, facial harmonization or facial rejuvenation is completely indicated but when I talk about the gray zone, it's because patient expectation. And we cannot provide a patient that is 60 years old to be 30 to the PRP. Can we get more glossy skin? Yes. Can we get new facial control? Yes. Can you rejuvenate a little bit? Yes, we can do it. Okay. And as I told you, sometimes we need a concord or another sphere or a concord of buttocks or a conquer of the Viora machine, okay, or the Viora treatment. We need a conquer of many other therapies to accommodate the complete expectation for our patients. So the fact that we have a PRP plasma platelet, a two centrifugation protocol, which, which is the fifth generation, what I wanna win by double centrifuges. Or I can separate all the platelets regardless the size. I can concentrate platelets of two times more by tubes. So I have more volume. And I can produce a two platelet concentrate. So this is the beauty to have the five generation of the PRP. So because of that, and I have that one generation here. Uh, I want to give you a sheet sheet or a list 
or team that you might need to have. Ask six or more blow to with anticoagulants. In a states, it's yellow. Other states, I don't know the colors. So at least you need six or more blood tubes with anticoagulant. Then you might need two or more tubes without anticoagulant. In the states are red. All over the world are different. So don't pay attention to red, the red or to the yellow. Pay attention that we need six blood uh, tubes with anticoagulant or two at least without, I mean, with anticoagulant. We need syringe and cannula, 28 and 30 gauge. We need two way syringe connectors. Of course, we need a centrifuge and we need a uh, oven. And uh, we need the anesthesia, can be topic and can be um, infiltrative. And sometimes we use both. Of course, let's start, how can we get the five generation PRP for fears as a plasma health, okay? So the first thing I wanna get, okay, my five, I mean my six to eight tubes in a yellow tutor, okay? So I have, and I am gonna get it, Okay, I have, I collected six or more blood tubes with anticoagulants, okay, I have here. I wanna spin for 150 G4s for 15 minutes, okay? So I go into the, the centrifuge. One, you get it out, I get plasma in the top and I get leukocyte just in the middle and then I get the red cell right here. That part here is the one that I have the most uh, concentration of um, the growth factors right here, okay? Then I will take out from my yellow tubes all of the yellow portion, okay? And I'm gonna put it in an other um, tube, which is, which is the, the, uh, the red to tube, okay? And we wanna get all of it um yellow portion and we're gonna put it in one uh red tube okay as you see right here and then i want to get that tubes and i want to centrifuge back i want to spin it for the second time and it's going to be uh for 300 before for 10 minutes and i'm gonna get at the position of the platelet right here because I'm working on the face, you don't want anything red. So you don't want the platelets. You don't want anything that will stain on your face. And of course, then you wanna remove the top, the half of the top portion, only the plasma, okay? And we wanna separate and we wanna keep it in uh, with a syringe as you have it here. Okay, and the rest you wanna remind in the um, tube, okay? So one part, I wanna take it out. Why? Because I need to cook it, just the plasma, I need to cook it. And where all the platelets and the factors is in the border, okay? I will take it out and I wanna mix that, okay? And this is the one that I wanna use to mix the jelly portion with the liquid portion. Okay, so uh, I take my plasma, I remove 50% of the plasma, and I wanna put in the over of it. How much is gonna have? Eight minutes by 75 uh, degrees Celsius. When it came out, it came in a jelly pour, which is a plasma gel PRP. And of course, once I have that, the other portion that came uh, or I left it in my tube, I wanna just shake gentle, okay? To that suspend the platelets. And then I will start by using as part of my mixture. Now I have two syringe, one syringe with my growth factors and one syringe with my plasma, okay? 
Now I have to make the volumes. I have to make the fillers. How am I gonna get the, the fillers? So you need a two ways. So we wanna change from one syringe to the other syringe, like by doing a bleaching. But now how the proportions will be. And those proportions I wanna give you here. Uh, whenever you need to go and uh, make, uh, to write, to uh, rise a deep volume, we need to go one by one. One, the PRP gel, one part of liquid. When or where is going to be the areas? Well, the areas would be at the malar or at the shin. Okay, you have to give volume. When you have deep holes and wrinkles, you might want to go one part of gel, two part of liquid. Where will be that zone in the, in the initial labial folds? Marionettes, lips, the glabella, and the mental increase. But sometimes we need to go to a very delicate zone, which is the underneath of the eyes. Those very shallow wrinkles, or because you are very dark, or they are very deep here. So the lower eyelid or the closed teeth, very, very tiny. So you use one part of the one uh, gel and three parts of the liquid. As you see here, I remove from my um, oven and I want to start mixing one part and two part or, or one part of gel or one of liquid or two of liquid or three of liquids. And it's going to depend on what you want to full fill. Of course, I have my plasma gel here and I have in that side my uh, growth factors, my feeders. So I want to start mixing and you really want to mix them to get very uh, cremous, very uh, homo homogeneous. You don't want any bubbles, why? Because you don't want bumps. What problems that you have with the uh, feeders that are no PRP is like it's very difficult to discharge. So when you discharge, if you are not very used to do it, you discharge as a rosary, as a bowl, and the, the patient can feel it. And most of the time you can see it because it's like a roller coast, right? With PRP, you don't have that. You mix it a lot very well. And when you release it, it's very easy to release in the patient uh, face. So here we are mixing rough to one syringe to the other syringe to get it homogeneous. And we want to start working like in the glabella area. The glabella area, okay, uh, we want to be using because it's a deep pools and wrinkles. We want to use one part of the beer, uh, the PRP gel and two parts of the liquid, okay? And see how uh, I make that patient from here to here. Okay, it's more smooth. Uh, I would never take out completely the whole expression, but it's more startling. It's more nice and easy. It's more smooth. And as you see here, it will be one part and uh, two parts of liquid. Then we want to see the cross fit. And see how many cross fit the patient has here. You see, a lot of them is an old patient. So what happened is for the cross fit, I want to use, it's, they are very shallow. They are not too deep, and I have a lot of them, right? So you don't want to make a bubble. You just want to make it a, a small, like a smoother down. I want to use three liquid, one uh, PRP gel, and you see how smooth and nice it is for the patient. See the difference up before and after, more calm down. See on the mid of the eye, that is a John, a lady. And you see how deep it is and how brown it is. Okay, so that face is very uh, like sad. So something that you just born with that. So because we're doing the on the knees of the eyes, we have to be very careful. And we want to use one part of the gel, three part of the liquid, okay? And see the after is more uh, white and it's less deep. To make younger, happy, uh, friendly. Okay? So it's a lot of the difference between the before and after in her case. 
of course, when we're using on the, uh, the lead eye, we want to use a cannula. And a cannula, you see, we have a hole where the liquid or the gel is going to go through and it's completely rounded. Uh, you can use 20 gauge or 30 gauge cannula. And because uh, the cannula needs a pointed side, we want to use a needle to open at the pathway for the cannula. Of course, you have to be very careful when we do uh, the eye in that case, because our getting point will be some point right here, and you want to go and touch all the time your hoarded, okay? You want to touch that. You don't want to go toward uh, the lashes, the lower lashes, because we can be in problems. And then you, you just scan because you want to leave the material by there, okay? But uh, the eyes are the more difficult to do it. So I, uh, if you want to start, don't start with eyes because it's very technical sensitive. And of course, uh, see in that case, we want to be working on scars. And when we work about scars, have to see here, see the scar here and see the scar right here. Beautiful result. And what, uh, what I use, I use like a cross, uh, cross session, okay? Like a half stash uh, with uh, one to three and one to two um, proportion in her case. And when we're talking about lips, and um, most of the people love to do big lip, uh, lips, we have to be very careful. Why? Because that is different from African-American to the Caucasian. Uh, for African-American, we want to have a one-to-one. -one. From Caucasian, you want to have the upper lip one and the lower lip one and a half to 1.5, uh, 0.6. So you want the lower lip a little bit more bigger than the upper lip. And we have to be very careful about it. About lip movements, we have to check with the patient how the movement goes. And because of that, we have to think about the elasticity. When we get low, uh, old, we lose elasticity, we, love, we lo uh, lose volume. The uh, dermis is very, very thin. We don't have collagen and elastin. We develop vertical lines. The volume is very, very thin and uh, it's thinner uh, the white of that lip and the definition is completely gone. Because of that, see that patient, I just finished on her beautiful full hybrid mouth rehabilitation uh, and see, I just accommodate from her the lead, okay? I make a little bit better and reshape the filtrum and reshape um, the, um, the line and a little bit the volume for her. So that when we do a lead, the first thing that you want to do is the filtrum. It's the first thing that you want to do. The second state is the cupid, and you need to make a nice cupid as you see right here. Then you're gonna underline everything, upper and lower. Okay, and something that you wanna care is about proportion, less a little bit the upper and a little bit more the lower. Okay, and then you start feeling the volume inside. As you see here, I have a beautiful before and after in her in that case. Okay, and a little bit roll it out. That is very sensual, very sexy. See that case here. And this is how I start that patient, how I continue and see here the beautiful profile that I ended with just PRP. The maintenance protocol, uh, because it's something that is natural, it's bio. Uh, we will like to see the patient the first year, every four to five months, and then you want to space down. The beauty of that is that you are allowed to, uh, the, the own body to provide to the patients, um, elastin, collagen, vitamin, you nurse, you have nutrition in your skin, and uh, uh, you make very healthy. So along the line, you need, you need less, uh, maintenance and of course everything in the facial you might need like once or twice a year 
when you have the proper protocol the first year, every phase depends and every scheme is very different. So the beauty to work with the PRP fifth derivation is that you have an initial cosmetic effect, but then you have a permanent biological quality of all upgrade of your skin. So uh, if you would like to work inside that topic more, I will recommend Dr. Alun Garg and Dr. Renato Rossi book. It's a beautiful book about dermophilers and something that for a dentist is very difficult and we have to do it is learn, unlearn and relearn. All of us, we have to do that. And I will uh, share with you the article that you have step by step, what I talked to you about uh, today here in those minutes. I hope I can get to it. And um, I'm so grateful to share with such amazing people that like Dr. Gard, Dr. Cushman, Dr. Rossi, and a special thank you to Dr. Rossi and Dr. Gard to be my mentor and to put me on in that field, which I really love it. Uh, we change a lot and we see people in a different manner. I uh, encourage you to try and to go over. And the best thing on life is to work in whatever you want to work. And doing facial is something that you will really enjoy. You, you are out of your comfort zone, but when you do it in the right way, you feel like you improve the patient life, you improve the, the patient's self-esteem, and that is really, really nice. So you accomplish your dental work with your facial work. It's amazing, the work that we can do it. So if you want to get more uh, into it and you want to practice, uh, we have a course in Santo Domingo uh, in Derma Feeders. You can um, go through uh, the IDEA or the South Beach Institute and uh, you can enroll there. It's a beautiful today experience that you're going to have it and you will enjoy it as I do when I'm there. So uh, before I leave, um, I know that we are in a very, very difficult time right now and all needs to be back to our work, uh, uh, to see our friends, to see our students, to see our patients. And we work, uh, we would like to have the world be better uh, when we finish and have more conscience. So um, I would like to thank so much to all of you to give me that time to introduce you to that and new technique. And I really, if you have any questions, you can go through my pages. And I really appreciate for your time. Thank you again for all the hosts. Thank, thank again for uh, Dr. Kianor, for my host, and uh, for everyone that took the time to look to that presentation. And I hope you enjoyed as much as I did. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, ma'am, for the wonderful session you took. And, you know, in this world of, uh, like, the photogenic world right now, facial aesthetics has become the most important demand every patient requires, I feel. And thank you for, you know, enlightening us with the latest technologies uh, that you're working on. And moreover, uh, like, I even having some questions to ask you. Perfect. Uh, Ma'am, what is your view on hyaluronic pen? Okay, hyaluronic is completely different. It's um, based on hyaluronic acid, right? Um, the hyaluronic is a filler that right now comes in a different volumes. So you can have thick, thicker or thinner. What happens with the hyaluronic acid is it doesn't keep you the nutrition long time. The beauty of PRP against uh, hyaluronic acid is because you're nurturing your skin, you make a nutrition to your skin. Of course, when you do PRP, uh, sometimes if you have a very deep pores, okay, you might use to use PRP and also uh, those kind of fillers, okay? It's not one or the other. Sometimes you need to work it out. What I'd advise is first start with PRP 
and when you have already start getting your elastin and your uh, collagen, then you can uh, complete your work with a uh, hyaluronic acid. Definitely, okay. So uh, what is your view? Like what is, uh, what about, like what according to you is the difference between using PRP and the Botox? Because I have seen people using Botox a lot and like what is the main difference and what can be much more beneficial for use? Okay, it's completely different. Botox is a, a toxin, a botulinum toxin, and you use uh, to get numb the muscle, okay? You want to stop that muscle for shrinkage. So let's see, I have this one here, very, very deep. And you see, right, sometimes you saw me in the presentation. That is something that I can smooth down and look it with the PRP, but if I really want to take it out, I have to use Botox. Okay, so always start with PRP and then you check. Okay, uh, I have already my bed done, right? I have my skin. Uh, it's like you have your cream place or inside, right? From the inner part portion. So then you say, you know what? Uh, I have those huge wrinkles here that when I have the expression, I just compress its box. Okay, but PRP, if I have a huge wrinkles around here, and when I'm in my expression, I don't compress, the PRP will work perfectly nice. Okay. okay it's a matter of muscle compression. Okay, because uh, like results are quite similar for both of them, no? So that creates confusion, a bit of confusion. Yes. So, so uh, the Botox is just when the muscle is, you know, it's get compression and you want to release, like you have, you want to have a very, like a flat forehead, the PRP won't do it. You have to use Botox. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. So can both of them be like used together? Well, yes, I know. Can be together, but not at the same time. Okay. 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 So. Uh, the best way to do it is get first PRP, wait for a week or two, and then go back. You can do Botox or you can do hyaluronic acid. Okay. 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 Why? Because the patient can get bruise, can get inflammation, and you don't get the expression. Okay? okay. And when you do that, you have to be very careful. Uh, remember, I talked to you about symmetry. We want to be asymmetric between the symmetries. And uh, if you overcome too much, then you get so flat here, okay? Or you put too much, or you get, you know, like expression or your eyebrow is like this. So you have to be very careful and you have to manage the, the amount, the volume. And always I advise when I work with bottles or I work with acyloronic acid and even with the PRP, I start with small volume. Every okay. patient is different. Definitely, definitely, ma'am. Uh, next question is from Dr. Sor uh, Shorya. What is the duration of longevity compared to Botox used for crow feet and in glabular complex? Okay, it's different. Every patient is completely different. Okay, like in myself, if I have Botox, Botox say that it will last six months. Okay, like on three months and a half, I already need it. Okay, I'm, I'm very sincere. The PRP, the first year when you use the PRP, you might do it every uh, four months for the first year. Then you, spy, you can stay every six months and then every eight months. But when you use Botox, it's for a heavy expression. PRP is for nursing and for major expression more solidly. So you might want to use both PRP and Botox. In that way, when you use at the same time, you can uh, spread the time for Botox up to six to eight months. But you have to have the bed done with PRP first in your face. Okay. Uh, the next question is, uh, and like fillers are to be injected at different depths and some at bones. So what is the protocol for PRP fillers? Okay, it depends. If you are doing like malers that you want to pump it out, 
you're going to do it. You need to go very deep and touch the bone right here, your molar. You need to feel it and get back. I mean, you need to know anatomy because you can be in trolls, right? When we have those very fish, um, uh, the, um, the initial label falls very deep, the first thing that you want to do is to bring that out. To bring that out, you need to go very deep and touch forward. The same thing when people have the wrinkle in the mental zone here, you need to go deep. So whenever you want volume, you have to go deep because you have to increase from inside to outside. When you're doing the eye line here, you need to be very careful. You cannot go to outside because when you discharge, you leave the pathway. So the people realize you have something here and it's like you have an eye line here, right? Okay. So you have to be very shallow, but not too shallow. And that is a matter of experience, okay? There is no book in the world or any lecture that I can give you. Uh, because uh, when we start, it's so difficult and that happens for me. So sometimes you go so deep and sometimes you go too shallow. And if you go so shallow with the, has, uh, uh, with the hyaluronic acid, you get a grayish area that let me say what happens to you, mm -hmm. okay? The Botox, if you go so deep or so shallow, you might get some of those wrinkles. I mean, the, the expression very heavy because you spread in the um, in the knowing the perfect soul. So by having that is a matter of experience. Okay. Mm. Okay, okay. So next question we have from Dr. Park. How do you manage if Botox mistakenly injected in supratrochlear nerve? First of all, you have to be very careful with Botox. And I'm seeing people that is uh, going ahead and place Botox or uh, acyluronic acid or uh, PRP, okay? Without any proper training. By having a, a course here, give, give you the knowledge, but not give you the practical, okay? And that is very important. Well, with Botox, you have to be very careful uh, and that happened because at the beginning, uh, they are so pre-made, like the chart that is given to you, there is a chart that the company sent out. And they said two mm here, how many mm here? I mean, 0.00 mm. Mm. So what happened is when you start with someone, you cannot start with that proportions. You have to be very, very shallow. And the first time that you see the patient for the first time in your life, the patient will say, well, you know what? I guess I need more. That is good because you went in the right proportion and you go back and you can go back in 48 hours, 20, uh, 22 hours, like two or three days later on. Yes. And maybe you can go back in a week. Okay. You have to be very careful how you storage, if you storage, I mean, Botox is another, another story. And uh, what happened is if well, something is going wrong with Botox, we have to wait. There are too many things by now in the market that can help you, but just help those and fix. So this is why when we are working, you have to be in the start. Less is more. Definitely. So next, ma'am, um, like did do you find any sort of complications with PRP in any of your cases ever? Okay, I can tell you that we have treated a lot of patients uh, back in Santo Domingo, but a bunch of people, when I, people, when I say a bunch, it's more than 1,000, okay? okay? And uh, in the Santo Domingo facility, and also in my own private practice, and so far, the only com there is no complications. Sometimes the patient gets uh, inflamed, a little bit sore, okay? That is normal, that's it. Of course, you can get some bruise because when you inject it, you get into a vessel. That happens. So that means that if you have like a wedding, you have any special uh, social event. Uh, event, you cannot do it two days ahead before. Definitely. You have to do it like a week or two weeks uh, 
before it's definitely you can't take that bruise yeah, there in the event yeah but besides <laughs> that it's very safe it's the safest that you have right now definitely okay ma'am so thank you so much ma'am for your session and beautiful oration and you know giving tips and tricks moreover uh, for you know uh, bringing out beautiful results for the patients and for their aesthetics actually so thank you ma'am thank you so much for the session and i would like you to add few words at the end thank you so much i really appreciate for your time for your invitation and um and for that um today is a very difficult time get together everyone is so difficult uh, everybody thinking in what is coming next what is happening we are in a, under too much stress all over the world there is a one world before and after uh, coronavirus 19. so i really appreciate your initiative to get together people from all over the world with different experience uh, to share with everyone a little bit so it's take our contribution to the world, it's our contribution to uh, the science, and it's a contribution to people that is young and want to start and find out is depressed. Don't be depressed, it's going to pass, and everything will be fine. And you know, enroll and uh, take all the courses that you want, prepare a lot yourself from the future. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. So with this, we'll move on to the commencement of the session and we'll be right back with again a tremendous speaker with us. So, so with this, we'll move on to the end of the session. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, doctor. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.